I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. And this is one of my famous uh, bench-only videos where I just whip out a quick video for you without actually taking the time to do a big edit and showing you my face, just my beautiful hands. And what I want to show you real quick here is how to set up RSSI and link quality in your Betaflight OSD using Crossfire. You may have seen a video I made, and I actually run into a lot of people who are coming from FreeSky, and they're trying to do it the old FreeSky way, and that's not how you do it with Crossfire. So how do you do it? What you're going to do is you're not, here's what you're not going to do. You're not going to go to the input screen and set up an RSSI input using telemetry. You are not going to do that. That is how you do it with FreeSky. And you, you can do it that way, but that's not the right way to do it with Crossfire. Instead, what you're going to do is you're going to go, um, so in my case, I have the micro module. So we're going to be using the Lua script. If you have the full size module, you can do the same thing I'm about to show you just using the joystick and screen on your module. What you're going to do is you're going to long press menu and then that'll get you to radio setup and then you're going to hit page and that'll get you to your SD card. Depending on the radio you're using, you won't like if you've got a FreeSky X Lite, you don't have a menu button. You're going to push the joystick to the right. If you've got an X10S, it's but the basic function is the same. You're going to get to the SD card. You're going to go down to the Crossfire folder, press enter, and you're going to run execute the crossfire.lua script. I long pressed enter and then selected execute. And then you're going to need your quadcopter bound and plugged in, powered up, so you'll see XF Nano RX right here. You're going to hit enter to go into that, and you're going to go down to the channel that you want to put RSSI on. So you're going to use one of your channels. You're going to have to give it up. You're going to, have to give up one of your channels instead of being used as an aux mode. You're going to use it to carry this information. And in my case, I'm using channel seven. Why am I not using channel eight? Uh, because that's just how I've always done it. And I'm going to set that to LQ. You can set it to RSSI or you can set it to RSSI slash LQ. Take one second and talk about the differences between those. RSSI is your raw signal strength. But the problem with raw signal strength is that you can have interference and noise. Imagine a very loud rock concert going on while someone nearby is shouting in your ear, Hey, do you want me to go get you a beer? There's loud signal. That's them shouting, but there's loud noise. That's the rock concert. So RSSI alone doesn't tell you the whole story of whether you're about to drop out of the air. LQ stands for link quality and refers to the per sort of percentage of corrupted packets that we're getting. And LQ reflects both RSSI and interference. So LQ is what I prefer to use. The, the main reason you might want to use RSSI, in my opinion, is if you do really long range stuff. If you don't do super long range stuff, your RSSI is probably going to be good most of the time. Um, and if your RSSI does get low, your LQ will also drop. So in general, I think LQ is the way to go, especially if you don't do super long range stuff. But if you're not sure, you can choose RSSI slash LQ, and that will show basically the worst of the two. So if you get low LQ, it'll show, it'll go down. If you get low RSSI, it'll go down. Your pick, I like to use LQ. Then you're going to go into beta flight and we'll show you the next step from there. After you've set up your Crossfire receiver, the next thing to do is to go into beta flight. And this part is actually the same as if you were doing RSSI in the OSD with any other uh, type of transmitter. So you're going to go to the RSSI channel and you're going to pick the aux channel that you set your receiver to use. So in Crossfire, I use channel 7. That's going to be aux 3. Channel 5 is aux 1. Channel 6 is aux 2. Channel 3 is aux 7, and so on. So I'm going to set my RSSI channel to aux 3, and I'm going to hit Save. And then I'm going to need to also go to the Configuration tab, and you have to make sure that the RSSI ADC option is disabled. This is disabled by default on most flight controllers, but if by chance yours is enabled for some reason, it will cause the RSSI, uh, the RSSI aux channel to option to be overridden. So you want to make sure that you have disabled RSSI ADC. And then when you go to the setup tab, you should see RSSI. Well, at the moment, my transmitter's turned off, but you should see right here, the RSSI is showing. Well, with Crossfire, it should basically always be 99% if you're sitting in your office like I am. If you look at this and you see that RSSI is equal to 49%, here's what that means. That's a very common thing. Here in the receiver tab, when your transmitter is turned off, 
all of the aux channels go to middle position 1500 and that's 50 ish percent of the way between zero and a hundred and that's why when your transmitter is turned off your rssi shows 49 percent here's how to fix that a little bonus for the video here go into the fail safe tab and for whichever aux channel you have set for rssi so again in my case it's going to be aux 3 channel 7 change the fail safe value from hold position to set and change that to 1000. And what that's going to do is it's going to mean that when your transmitter is turned off, your aux channel is going to go to 0%. Say, so look now, and the RSSI will read 0% instead of reading 49%. That's going to do it for this video. Now you know how to set up RSSI or LQ in your OSD with Crossfire. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.